Hi, everybody. This is Vicki from Green Sewing and Vacuum. And yeah, we had a couple little problems a couple weeks ago. For some reason, YouTube decided not to play. We don't know what happened, really. I mean, they kind of explained it to me, but, you know, it goes right over my head. So anyway, I'm going to be showing, um, I'm going to show some of the things that I showed uh, two weeks ago. And then I also have some new things that came in because we have gotten some classes going. So uh, this is, of course, the first place that you're going to hear about them. So I'll just go through some things. And then I have, um, we're going to, the little um, class thing that I'm going to do at the end is actually on um, pin tuck feet and twin needles, which it's really kind of fun. I kind of played with my own fabric. And so anyway, I'll just get started and show you some fun things that we've got here. So to start with, um, I don't even know where I want to start. Oh, I guess I'll start with him because... Raina brought this in and we just think he is so cute. This is actually a free pattern from Riley Blake that is called Julia the Jellyfish. And so this is the little free pattern that they have online. And this is what Raina did. She had this piece of, uh, this is Cuddle, the Cuddle 3. So it's nice and soft. This is actually grow grain ribbon that uh, the pattern says to get it wet um, with glue or I can't remember what she said the pattern said. It was either glue or starch. I don't really recall. And wrap it around a wooden dowel and then you bake it. But then she um, either heard from someone else or something. She put it on uh, knitting needles because the metal would warm up more in the oven and that just get real curly. So I don't know if you can see this, but that's all different grow grain ribbon that she wrapped around those needles and then baked according to the instructions in the pillow. And it's just really fun. It's just kind of one of those fun tactile things where you just kind of want to play with it. So we've been playing with it in the shop because it's just real, just kind of goofy, you know, but it, it's just one of those fun things. You just make, you look at it and you just want to smile because it, it's just so happy. But that's Julia the jellyfish. And she's just so cute. And what was interesting is the pattern called for, I believe Raina said an 18 inch pillow form. Well, she brought it in and it was just so loose. We actually have a 24 in here. So that's how big it ended up being. So it's a, it's a little, it's a little poofy, but it really is fun. So you need to see this in person because it's really a hoot and it's just kind of one of those things you want to play with. So Julia right there. I don't know where I'm going to put stuff today. So, all right, Julia can go over there. All right, so then I made, I have been, this has been in my sewing room for quite some time. I don't know why I brought that over. I didn't mean to. So um, this is the Sydney Crossbody by Swoon. And I had had this cut out and sitting in my sewing room for quite some time, and I finally got to it. So I, I love how it turned out. We used the black camo that we have. And this, of course, is black cork and just great pockets. They're pleated pockets with the magnetic snaps. So there's lots of room in there. And it's got two snaps on each one. And then a big, deep pocket in the back that um, they suggest that you sew, but I put a couple of rivets on the back because you don't want this to flop out when you do it. So there's the pockets in the back, then you've got this pocket, the two pockets in the front that I showed you, and then the zipper pocket in the front. And then up top side, we've got pockets in the lining, zipper pocket in the lining, and that's it. So we've got, Fun, fun, but I think it just turned out so cool and used, of course, um, the new zippers by the yard that we've got and the awesome pop tab zipper pulls that we've got there. But I just think it turned out so cool. So Tina's already laid claim to it. Mary Beth won it, but Tina had already laid claim. So who knows? Someday, someday somebody will get it. But, share it. Oh, now Tina's saying she's going to share it. You think that's going to work real well? 
Mary Beth's shaking her head. I don't think it's going to work either, but I'm not getting in the middle of that cat fight. So, so we've got that one. And then um, let's see here. Where do I want to go? Because I've got, I'm trying to, blah, blah, blah. okay. So, we, oh, that's right. We had some really fun new Christmas fabric come in. I just love it. Look at these great pine boughs. I think those are so pretty. Just a nice, uh, it's a cream color background, just real soft and pretty. Got that one. Then we've got this great diagonal plaid, which I love this. This is super, like when you want to do those bindings with a plaid, this way you don't have to cut it on the bias. You can just cut it straight of grain. But I just think that is so gorgeous. And my bolt holder on there, watch me drop it. And then we've got candy canes with some pine bow on there, which is so fun. Mary Beth, I know what I forgot. Would you grab me a roll of that red vinyl? I forgot to bring that to the colorblind person, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got this great kind of window pane check. I just love this. This is, is just awesome. Just a nice, uh, like a picnic plaid or something. I really like it. And last time, thank you very much. Last time I showed this, I forgot, otherwise I would have put it in with my stuff. But we have this great vinyl that Mary Beth got me. And look how awesome that goes together. Can I do that? There we go. Look at that. Isn't that, it's just so yummy. So I've got to come up with something. I haven't quite made up my mind what I want to do yet, but I just love it. And this great vinyl, I think I showed this to you perhaps before, but it's got a great texture. Yeah, you can get it right there. A little bit of a texture on there, but isn't that, it's just beautiful. Of course it's red and I'm the red fan. So, you know, we got to have the red, got to have the red. So, um, so we've got that. Now we do have our Kimberbell. I did not show this the last time because I didn't have everything ready, but we do have <laughs> Tina's tiptoeing around here. So, so, <laughs> the, so the Kimberbell, uh, this is May. Yes. So for May, it's the watermelon chenille watermelon pot holder. This is the medium size one. This is the one that we kitted. So we have this for our Kimberbell that was for May. This is the little tiny one. I mean, that little baby's only like maybe four inches, but so cute. So then of course, we always like to take those designs and do something ourselves with it or do our own thing with it. So we actually made a little tote. I don't know if you guys recall, but this is a Kimberbell vinyl and it just turned out so cute. So we saw what a cute little picnic tote this would make. So we've got our napkin and our, our plastic wear in there. Well, we took the watermelon and put it on just to, to make a pocket, but we used the Kimberbell glitter vinyl to make the watermelon instead of doing the chenille. And then instead of attaching buttons like they had, because on this, these are little teeny tiny black buttons. So instead of putting the buttons on, we used just a decorative stitch on the machine and just adjusted it so it looked like watermelon seeds. But just real simple and fun to do. But I just love this little, just a little lunch bag or tote bag. I did have a customer ask, will it fit a plate? And I, so I went and I grabbed a, one of our decent sized paper plates and it fit right inside. So you could definitely put a paper plate in that. But like I said, that's that vinyl. So you can just wipe that down. And we just used a red cotton webbing for the handle. So we do have those kits up. Tina's got those on the site for us. Move that before I trip over it. So now June, June is the um, collage, um, uh, beautiful, be beautiful, beautiful towel, something, beautiful be, tea towel, be beautiful. So they had two different versions for this, um, 
bowl of flowers. You can either do their collage method, which is stacking different layers of the colors of the fabrics, or you can do their just applique with one solid piece of the fabric here, here, and here. So we kitted it in the applique version. We then um, haven't finished our supplemental design, but we'll be showing that as soon as we can get it in. In the pattern, they also did a little collage heart. So we're taking the collage heart and doing another little project with it, actually using the polka dot towel that goes along with this one. So, but um, didn't quite get that done. And it's also using some of the new uh, zippers by the yard that we had come in. So we've put those in the kit too, so you can play with that some. So I think that'll be kind of fun. So that's the Kimberbell June project. Those kits will be available. I think Tina's already gotten them on the site, but um, they're not live yet until the first of the month. So we're getting them. There. So we've got them there. They'll be showing up on the first. So we've got that. Then real quick, for those of you that are interested in the Kimberbell, this is the Cup of Cheer Advent Quilt. I'm pretty sure I talked about this about a month or so ago. These kits are coming in. We're getting the CD, the embellishment kit, and the uh, fabric kit. So all three of them um, totals 227.90. Well, we're offering a 20% discount for a pre-order on this for you guys. So if you pre-order this, it should be coming in sometime before the middle of June. I am anticipating and you will get a discount. We have limited quantities. I didn't order a ton of them. So if it's something that you're wanting, you better get it ordered up. And that uh, 20% is actually a $45.58 savings. So pretty cool. It's a very cute quilt. It has lots of little pockets and some of the packages have zippers on the front of them. I don't know if you recall me talking about that, but just it, it's a little advent calendar. Now that doesn't mean you have to put the numbers on it. It doesn't have to be an advent calendar. It could just be a cute little quilt with some little added extras on it. But that is on the site. Tina's got it on there. And you get that discount while they last or until they come in. So we've got that coming. So then, um, okay, some of the classes, we finally have gotten them on. So uh, because people have been asking, we've been pushing. We finally got it going. So I have... Um, some of you may know Barb Chambers. She's actually going to be doing our beginning quilt class. And the quilt here behind me, this is the quilt. Let me get that out of the way. Basically. So this is the quilt that she's going to be working with you on. It's going to be a six session class starting on Thursday evenings, July 7th. So it's going to be from six to nine, six consecutive Thursday evenings, and uh, it's going to be really fun. So we've got that. That's already ready to go. We've had a lot of people asking more and more for the beginning quilting classes. I have a list that I'm going to be calling. So you might want to, if you're interested in beginning quilting, it is an evening class. We've tried to make it late enough in the evening, too, so that those of you that work can, you know, grab a bite to eat get your stuff, get in here, get set up and get going. And she's just a really super, super nice, nice, nice person. Uh, we've just been, she and I've been working together for quite some time, finally got some dates together that we were able to do because I wanted to do it in an evening so that I could accommodate some people that work. And by doing it this time of year, it's still staying light enough that you'll be able to uh, get home. It won't be super dark by the time it's over. And then we've had some people that have been asking me to throw in some things for, um, we're calling it study hall with Vicki. You know, you come in, you do whatever project that you want to do, and you just get a little bit of help. So um, I'm going to be doing that. I've got uh, three separate dates on some 
Thursdays lined up starting in June. So you might want to check and see if I've got one in June, one in July, and one in August. So you might want to check and see if any of those check online, see if it works out for you, get signed up. It can be a sewing project. It could be an embroidery project, something that you, if you want a little help, or if you just want to get away from home and get away from the vacuuming or the dishes or whatever, you know, going on. You just want to be with some other people that are sewing. So we've got that coming up too. So we've also got Raina, the boxy tote. We've had a lot of people asking about this since she brought it in. This is the boxy tote that she did out of the She Who Sews fabric. This tote is actually set up so that it could hold a um, featherweight. That's what they tout it for. Let me get this baby open. And it just has the hinges, hinge like that. And it's got all those pockets on the inside. Nice sturdy bottom with the Decoville in there to help hold that shape in the bottom. And then it just closes up pockets on the outsides and on the ends and back and front. So she's got this class coming up. She and I discussed it and decided to make it a three session class because you're also, you're going to be needing to quilt those pieces on that first day of class. And so she can go over with you the layout of your fabrics and all of that. So you'll be doing some quilting and then going from there for this bag. So we are doing this. This is coming up three consecutive Saturdays starting July 23rd. It's going to be 1030 to 230. And if you sign up prior to June 18th, it's a $60 class. Thereafter, it's going to be $75. So sign up early because this is a great bag. We've got a number. I've already called a number of people who were interested. They said they were going to be in to get signed up. So if you're wanting in, don't wait because this is, this is going to be an awesome, awesome class. I just love this bag. So that one. I'm running out of room back here, guys. So, okay. Then Raina is also doing, we've had some um, kind of beginner sewers or people that might just need to have brush up on some of the things that uh, with their machines or just sewing in general, uh, kind of honing some of those seam allowances and that type of thing. So she is doing a back to basics class. It's going to be two Saturdays and we've got a set scheduled for June. I can't read that too far away. <laughs> June 18th and 25th or September 17th and 24th. So those are the two uh, sets that we have. And what you'll be making is, and you'll choose your own fabrics. Thank you. <laughs> so could choose your own fabrics, but we're making a pillowcase, which is really fun. And we've got a little, just a real simple little zipper pouch that is lined. Just real, just real simple. I mean, these are basic, basic, basic. And then cute little pillow that's, she does have, this is quilted. So you'll be doing some quilting on it. She put this great flange on it and you will be putting buttonholes and buttons. So isn't that, I mean, that's just great. It just shows you some of those fun, fun things that you can do with your machine. And then lastly, just a real simple little tote bag, not lined, nothing Fancy. This is just a real simple little tote bag to give you the basics on doing a tote. But it is fully lined and great little straps there. So we've got that coming up. Okay, so now on to leading up to what I'm going to do tonight. So I think you guys remember, this is the zippy clutch that I made some time ago out of that gorgeous canvas from Mary Beth and this yummy purple uh, vinyl that we had. And of course, it's got the little zipper on the front here for a little pocket there. And then 
the zipper up top side and totally lined. Super fun, fun pattern. So, and this is an Amy Lynn Designs pattern and it's called the Zippy Clutch. Well, she, she's got some awesome, awesome stuff. I just love what she's done. I showed you some other things, um, the little plastic, um, not plastic, but they have the vinyl front. Um, thank you. Mary Beth's rolling all over to get me something. <laughs> So this is one of them. This is another one of hers that we did. This is the large size. And then this is the small size. And so these are patterns of hers that she's done for us. So when um, she it's just super, I mean, just uh, this is actually and angled and I don't have my paperwork. I stupidly left it at home, but this is taking that same, I buried it. This is taking the same bag, but she has done an add on to the pattern where you can angle that zipper. And so you do need to buy this pattern and then the angled zipper add on is a supplemental pattern. Also a supplemental that she's done is she's made it so that you, on the lining, she's put a, uh, a credit card add-on for that lining so you can put credit cards in there. So I just think that, it, I, I just love them. I love the patterns. They're so cool. It's downloadable online. She's really super. So what I did is I have been wanting to, again, play with uh, twin needles and the pin tuck foot and all of that. So I took some great, um, the wonder fill thread that's called bumblebee and this kind of army green. This is a linen, cotton linen that we have. And this is an army green cork that we have. And here again, using the zipper by the yard, this is the size three, this is the size five. But I did decorative stitching and I did pin tucking on this. And I will tell you, as I said a couple of weeks ago, and I have to bring her name up again because you know she meant Mary Beth actually thought this fabric came this way. It didn't. I did this using my twin needle. And so that just kind of made me feel good because then you see, okay, well, you know, it it looks it looks cool. So tonight I'm going to be showing you I have the machine set up for the pin tucking and then I'll do a little bit of the decorative stitching. Just a real quick thing to kind of show you how easy it is to do. But this, this little tote, I think what a great opportunity to show off like an embroidery design or the decorative stitching. Um, just a lot of fun things that you could do with just to, just to play. I, it, it's because you're not using a whole great big piece of fabric that maybe you don't like or what you can do is like what I did is I laid the uh, pattern piece down, went outside of it so that I could lay it where I wanted it to have it all look good. So just a real cool pattern for that because it's just a great, great way to show some, um, just some fun stuff to do. But pin tucking and decorative stitching is so much fun. So we're just going to just like, oops, my fabric back. Roll on over here. All righty. So I've already put the twin needle in, and with a twin needle, and uh, they the foot got my packaging right here. So the packaging on this. So with a uh, baby lock, this is the five groove pin tuck foot. And I think, um, well, I've already got the foot on the machine, but uh, there's, there's five little grooves in this for the pin tucking. You can either put a cording through to make the pin tucks stand up higher, or you can just uh, let the twin needle go through. They'll be a little flatter, not quite as much texture to them, but um, both ways are really fun to do. They recommend, um, a 1.5, I two, I think it was a 2.5, excuse me, twin needle. Uh, you don't want to go real, real wide because it really doesn't um, pook up 
or poke up at all. You want to have that because the narrower the needle. Technical term. Yeah, you like that technical term, <laughs> poke up. <laughs> that, um, the the two the 2.0 I actually found worked really well with it. So that's what I'm going to be using tonight. So you and you're just going to have um, straight stitch when you're do, using the pin tuck. You could do a, um, a soft curve or something like that, but I wouldn't get too crazy with, you know, trying to do anything real tight. It really wouldn't work that well. But um, so on this machine, what's nice about this one is it does have this button right here that you can tap. Right now it's in single needle and then you can tap over and it goes into a twin needle. What that does is it will then tell you if there's a stitch that you can't use. So I'll show you that in a little bit, but um, you want to put it on twin needle. Now what I did, because I didn't want to get two spools of the thread that I was using, so I transferred some of the thread to a bobbin and I put it up on um, uh, oh. the thread spool where you usually are going to um, fill your bobbin. So I put one on there and then I put the other and put the other spool, the regular spool of thread where you, you normally would. So I find that it's easier if I take the thread that's up uppermost on the top part of the machine, I take it, thread it through first and I put it in the left hand side of the twin needle, then take the other thread, run it through and put it through the right hand side of the needle. And it just seems to, to work well for me, whatever works for you, but it, I just find that that's the best. Uh, you don't want to go real fast because the, the machine does have to kind of think about what it's doing on the underneath side for these threads. And as I said, the bumblebee thread that I used from Wonderfill, it's the 2D. 2D? Okay, they're nodding at me. So 2D. <laughs> so it's the 2D thread from Wonderfill and the color bumblebee was just perfect on this army green linen. So when I do, when I did the pin tucks for the little zipper pouch, as I said, I did an outline of the area larger than what I wanted the bag to be. So I could kind of do basically a fussy cut. I marked down the center with a chalk marker because that's what showed on this fabric. That's where I stitched my first line so that I would have it straight. So I marked that nice straight line, stitched down that. Then with those grooves that are in the bottom of this foot. So this is a little line that I stitched earlier this evening. So then I took and the, the, far, the groove that's on the farthest right hand side is actually Oh, is that in the way? <laughs> is actual thanks, guys. So it's where I'm going to be dragging that so that it so this line is straight. So then the next one is going to drag down from there. And Oops. as I said, you don't want to go real fast. And then when you get down to the end, wherever you are, remember don't use your thread cutter. So I just raise the needle, lift the foot, and I grab the thread and I pull and then cut. Well, they're trying to get a better Can shot. Can you do that one more time? Okay, I'm gonna do it <laughs> one more time. Okay, so I'm going to line that groove where that last <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> Don't worry about the man behind the <laughs> curtain. <laughs> so we just line that up and we just use it. No, I think one of my yep, one of my needles came unthreaded after all of that. So um raise up. Okay. Now you guys get to see the fun part. You get to see me try and thread a twin needle. And where is that? There it is. Okay. Nope. Okay. All right. So this was my trick. You could just show them where the 
where to line up. Yeah, and then you show okay. the finished product. Well, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to thread it anyway for the decorative stitches. Oh, okay. So, um, okay, so bear with me, folks, because this is the part that's really difficult for me because you can't use your needle threader. All right. So, I'm taking the one in the back first, and that's going to go in the left-hand side. And I found the easiest way for me is to take a piece of white paper and put it Put it behind that. Sure. Isn't this fun, guys? You know, this this is the pits getting old when you can't see. Okay. I think I got that one. And then I just grab a pair of tweezers and grab it and move it to the back. Okay. And I'll thread the right hand side. <laughs> Mary Beth's being smart, Alex. <laughs> well, I had LASIK. <laughs> Trying to get my money's worth. <laughs> Too bad they can't make those threaders work on double needles. I know it. <laughs> So then what I do, because the pin tuck foot, as you can tell, I can't tell where I'm at. Okay. You're on the left over there. Okay. Okay. So the pin tuck foot doesn't have an opening for me to be able to slide the thread through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both pieces of both strands of the thread and Put it in that hole and then snap the foot on the machine because otherwise there again it's kind of watching me all fumble finger to try and get those to go through once the foot is on the machine so i'm just going to take these cut them both to the same length thread it through that opening on the foot move it up there and snap it on there we go okay so we are threaded you can see why i did that before i put the camera on okay so you're just going to again as i said you're going to drag that um i'm using the groove on the foot it's on the furthest the farthest right hand side and that's where i'm going to follow that down because this pin tuck right here will follow that groove. So all of my pin tucks will be straight. As long as the first one is straight, the rest of them will be straight when you follow that through. So remember, you can't use your cutter. So needle up, lift the foot, and then grab it and pull and cut. So now you can also, because you can tell in my bag, where, this one? Okay. Mm -hmm. You can tell that I did, um, I did some fun decorative stitches. Now this one right here, the serpentine turns out so cool in that double, in the twin needle. So that's what I'm going to show tonight. One of the things that you want to bear in mind when you're doing decorative stitching, and particularly with a twin needle, I put a tearaway stabilizer underneath just to give me a little more stability because otherwise it can kind of crinkle everything up. So I'm going to take the, take the pin tuck foot off. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and use my standard foot. All right, so then on the machine, you'll find, like, say, um, if I just push this zigzag right here, if I push the zigzag, see how it actually gives you a little bit of a preview of what the stitch is going to look like. Now, if I take, let me see, um, well, let's see, then you kind of, now I'm trying to find one that it won't, oh, okay, so that one, that stitch right there, this one here, when I pushed it, a little warning came up. This function cannot be used while the machine is in twin needles. So see, it's not going to let me do a stitch that could, could hurt it or break the needle that wouldn't work. But as I said, my favorite stitch is the serpentine. And we, okay, right there. You can elongate it if you want. Um, I basically just left it where it was because I thought that would turn out really cool. So I've got my tearaway stabilizer under there. Again, don't speed, just go along. And it will do a beautiful twin serpentine. And you can just, you can just keep adding stitches and adding stitches, experimenting. I always experiment on a scrap before I go to my actual project, just in case it does a stitch that I don't like. Remember, don't use your cutter. Raise that needle, lift the foot, pull towards the back, and cut. And you can see, where am I? You can see how beautiful that twin needle works out with that serpentine. So it's just another way to make a plain fabric look really cool. I mean, I just, it, it just looks so neat. And of course the thread choices, I, I have to tell you, I really liked that thread. I thought it worked perfectly on this army green. You can see that I also used it to top stitch. I top stitched along the zipper here. I top stitched it on up here and up around this zipper too. So I used that same thread throughout because I just thought it turned out so cool. So um, anyway, I hope you guys will. This one, okay. Hi. <laughs> I don't know where I'm. We going. changed it, so they changed me out. So anyway, I just hope you guys have some fun playing with that. Try those twin needles. Just remember though that with the pin tuck foot you need to go with a narrower twin needle. But they make twin needles that go all the way up to a 4.0 millimeter which is really cool. It's real wide and that can give you another entire look. A little tricky getting them threaded as you can see especially when you have old eyes. But um, just fun to do and you could actually even use two different colored threads and there's a lot of options that you can do it's just really some fun things to do so anyway i hope you have fun and uh, i'd love to see if anybody does anything with it because i think that would be really cool so anyway everybody thank you very much it's memorial day weekend everybody be safe um and we look forward to seeing you in the shop and i'll be back in a couple of weeks so thanks everybody good night